Welcome to the Hawk Sports Network. Time for some October baseball here at Connor Vale Park. The Humber Hawks against the Fanshawe Falcons. My name is Adam Lusher here with my broadcasting partner, Andrew Milani. And these Humber Hawks, they face a pretty stern test today in the Fanshawe Falcons. Not the season we're used to seeing out of Fanshawe, but always tough when the Falcons come to town. Yeah, the Fanshawe Falcons have made a, a habit of meddling at uh, provincial and national tournaments, so definitely a tough opponent coming in here today to Connervale Park. But as you said, Fanshawe not having the greatest year, only have a 6-7 and seven record, fighting for that final playoff spot. And you know they're going to come out tough here this afternoon. Yeah, you said it, Andrew. I mean, a lot to play for. For these Falcons, the top four teams will move off in a playoff situation. And Fanshawe on the outside looking in, they sit in fifth with that six and seven record here. So you got to think they're going to bring everything they have to Connor Vale today. They're going to have their work cut out for them against Humber starter Stephen Huff. Yeah, Huff, the uh, wily veteran here for the Humber Hawks. He's going to come out and, and be on the mound here this afternoon. And he's crafty there on the mound. So he might be a little, we're going to see if he's uh, too much to handle here for the Falcons. But should be a good matchup here either way. Yeah, what a year it's been for the veteran Huff. 3-0 on the season, a 1.98 ERA himself along with his teammate Braden Taylor with that 1.58 ERA, both in the top three in ERA for the OCAA standings. So this rotation has come through clutch. They've had strong defense along the way. Offense has been absolutely dynamic at times. We'll see what's in store today. the second baseman number four, Derek Smith. The right fielder number 23, Ferris Odemu. And the pitcher number three, Stephen Barclay. And now here's the starting lineup for your Humber Hawks, managed by Jeff Gibbs. Leading off the right fielder, number 22, Steven Malbecki. Batting second, the shortstop, number 12, Sam LaBelle. Batting third, the center fielder, number 27, Liam Sutherland. Batting fourth, the left fielder, number 16, Dennis DeBanning. Batting fifth, the designated hitter, number 14, Hunter Bisser. Batting sixth, the third baseman, number 26, Ty Martich. Batting seventh, the first baseman, number 29, Cam Wilcox. Batting eighth, the catcher, number eight, Jeff Sims. Batting ninth, the second baseman, number three, Leif Bursell. And on the mound, number 13, Steve Hoff. We say please rise from your house to the playing of the Canadian National Anthem. So with player introductions and national anthem in the books, it's time for some baseball. 
Baba O'Reilly plays out at Connervale Park as we're just about to get set here. You can see Huff on the hill. It'll be the Battle of Stevens today. Steve Huff getting the start for Humber. On the other side, Stephen Barclay for the Falcons. See Huff warming up there. A crafty veteran, that's kind of the scouting report on him. It's what we hear around, not exactly the hardest throwing guy. He's not going to blow a fastball by you, but it's his control and what he's got in that arsenal that makes him so tough to hit. Yeah, he doesn't rely on the strikeout to get his outs. It induces a lot of ground balls, a lot of fly balls, and this uh, Humber defense will have to be good today to back him up th this afternoon. Yeah, 17 and two-thirds innings pitch for Huff on the year. Only nine strikeouts to his name, so definitely a pitcher who looks for contact with the defense behind him. That's an awful good skill set to have, particularly particularly this middle infield. Excited to see it today. We've seen a lot of Gonzalez at second base today. Leafs Bursiel is going to get the start. So here's the shortstop, McGuire Gordon. Huff starts him off high and inside. In there, strike one, count now even. Swinging strike over to Ty Martin on third. He'll take a sweet time. Throw over, gets Gordon by a step, out number one for Huff. Routine play there for Martin, no mistake, one out. Martin has been one of the best in the province with his bat this year. No slouch on the hot corner though. So much value to this club defensively. Not too often you see a big 5-0 on the baseball diamond, but there's one there. Catalin Morin. One zero pitch, swing and a foul. Once again, even. Following a similar path as that first at bat in this one. Good example there of Huff not having the most power there behind his pitches, but doing a good job just throwing off the batter's timing. When Huff is hitting his spots, one of the toughest pitchers to hit in this league, but he's hit hard there. Morin's going to have extra bases. That one goes all the way to the corner. Turning for three here. The throw not in time. Sliding in head first. Safely with the triple is Morin. A triple here in the top of the first. Just one out. Huff in a little bit of trouble here as we'll see Braden Halford step to the dish. Not the guy you want to see in this situation. Yeah, especially when you got the runner just a few feet away from home plate scoring the first run. Halford batting 385 on the year. He's definitely been the best offensive player for the Falcons this year. Chance to add to his eight RBI. Swings on the first pitch, a dribbler to Wilcox. Run will score at the plate. Morin comes in to break the ice in this one. It's a one nothing ball game for the Falcons. Ground ball by Halford, a productive out as he'll record the RBI. Just like that, one nothing for Fanshawe early on. Base is empty now, two out, chance for Huff to settle in here. Josh Hare, the DH now in the batter's box. And 
once again, that familiar 1-1 count here for Huff. Doing a good job controlling the count here, but most baseball people know it's all about that third pitch. Just like that, it's a hitter's count. So Hare likely with the green light here. See if Huff gives him something to hit. Mixing it up with the off speed there. Misses low though. Hitter's count gets even better here for Hare. That's a hard hit ball. Nice stop at second there. The scoop can't be made by Wilcox. Nice work by Bursiel out there to slide and knock that one down from going into right field, but scoop can't be made at first base. Hasn't been a pretty start to the top of this first inning. Yeah, so far things not going the way the Hawks intended. You'd like to see Huff throw a little bit more strikes. He's throwing about 50-50 in terms of balls and strikes, and the defense there and not what he would have liked there is a guy who induces a lot of balls in play. Yeah, not an easy play for Bursiel there, knocking that one down, trying to pop to his feet and get it over, throwing the dirt. Some defensive miscues here early on for the Hawks, and especially Huff being the contact pitcher that he is. He's going to need the help. This is a batter to watch out for. Judd Walker already with the home run on the year. Leads Fanshawe in slugging percentage with a 536. Yeah, that's why it's so surprising to see Fanshawe with this 6 and 7 record. You look up and down the lineup, and it's a good looking stat sheet. Some nice box scores throughout their season, but for whatever reason, whether it's the competition or just not be able to play up to the big moments, Fanshawe struggled. Yeah, a lot of talent on this team, but. For whatever reason, they just haven't been able to put things together most nights. This baseball program for Fanshawe has been around for five years. They've medaled in the OCAA championships all five seasons, and in the last three years have medaled in the NCBC. As there's another hard hit ball up the center. center. Gets by Bursiel. Run coming into home. Throw cut off by Wilcox. Runner retreats back to third. So these Falcons are hitting Huff hard early on here. Runners on the corner, two out. Huff's going to have to settle in here, just try to get out of this one. Yeah, Huff already thrown 16 pitches so far. Now, what do you want to see in the first inning? You usually like to get it over with pretty quickly. Pretty nice October day, but it is cool out here at Connervale Park. Might be tough for Huff just to kind of get loose, stay warmed up. Obviously, he works quick, but... He's going to cool off in those short sleeves. Ball gets by Sims. Runner coming home, scoring with ease, standing up. No play. We have a 2-0 ball game. Hare comes home to steal home on a pass ball. And again, not a play that you would like to see in there, this Humber defense. Just taking a little bit to get into this one. You got to get things turned around here quickly. Fanshawe is no slouch. And a good meeting on the mound here. Yeah, I think this is the right time to do it here for Sims. Just checking in, quick tap. Making sure we're all on the same page. So here's Bradley Verhoeven. He'll work behind the plate today for the Falcons, now with an opportunity at the plate. Runner on second, 2-0, top of the first. Hawks in tough here against the Falcons, a 2-0 ball game. An RBI ground out and a pass ball, steal home. That's what's got us to this point. First time in the game so far where Huff has been ahead of the, in the count. 
control been a little bit of an issue here early on. Yeah, we mentioned Huff being in the top three in the OCAA ERA race. It's going to raise up a bit today, already two runs in. Verhoeven taking his time at the plate. Huff is a pitcher that likes to work quick. Maybe trying to upset the timing here. Hard struck ball into center field. Hawks record the final out. That'll do it here for the top of the first. Liam Sutherland able to track that down and make the play. It's a 2-0 ball game after the top of the first. Hawks offense had some work to do. Yeah, not a great start there. A couple runs, a couple hits, a couple errors, but you leave that runner on base, so definitely a nice end to that top of the inning for the Hawks. Yeah, it could have been worse. At least I'm sure that's what they're saying in the Hawks dugout at the moment. This is an offense that could put up a whole lot of runs going into the day. I'd, I'd imagine head coach Fred, uh, Jeff Gibbs would say, hey, it's going to take more than two runs to win this ball game. Oh, absolutely. I guess Humber Hawks team, they've really built their name around their offense. 94 runs on the season. So this is a team that can definitely bat the ball around the field. Yeah, we take a look at Barclay there on the hill for the Falcons. He carries a 5.83 ERA into today's contest. Another guy that's not going to blow you away with his speed of his pitches. Not too many strikeouts, but... We'll see how his control is this afternoon. And if he's on, it could be a tough test here for the Hawks. Yeah, he's made three appearances for the Falcons this year. Not a win yet, but does have a loss to his name. A big spot for any opposing pitcher to come into the defending National College Baseball Championship, go to their home diamond, and face off against a hot team when really your season's on the line. You're on the outside looking in of a playoff spot. Big opportunity here for Steven Barclay, the third year player out of Markham. Up steps Nara Becky. First man in the box for the Hawks today. Already in a game of catch up here in the bottom of the first. Let's see what Nara Becky could do. Nara Becky just having a monster season. One of three Hawks hitting over 400. OBP over 500, and that's slugging up there, too. Definitely knows what he's doing with that bat. Swinging a hot one at the moment. And not only does he brings that value as a leadoff hitter, but when he's able to get on base and start these innings, already six stolen bases for Narabeki on the year. Brings value all around the diamond. Even count here, 2-2. Two, two. We've seen Steve Huff work hard in the top of the first. Hawks going to try to wear on the arm of Stephen Barclay. That looping curve fouled away. Could be playable in foul territory. Play made. Braden Halford over there on third appeared to overrun that ball, able to reach back at the last minute and make the play. That'll retire Narapeki, so leadoff hitter. Walking back to the dugout for the Hawks. Yeah, I didn't think he was able to get a glove on that, but Halford just being able to stretch out and make that out.
Sam LaBelle, the first year sort shop. What a piece he's been for Jeff Gibbs this season. Yeah, nice little surprise for these Hawks. Not often a first year player stepping up in such an important position like shortstop and really playing well, but here we are. Yeah, it's always fun talking to the real baseball heads around Humber. There's plenty of diehards, and Sam LaBelle is a name you just keep hearing about. A lot of positive attitudes towards him and his spot in this program. Hard hit ball to the hot corner. Throw over in plenty of time. Nara Becky down, LaBelle down. Let's see what Liam Sutherland has in store. You've mentioned a few times, Andrew, those 400 hitters for the Hawks. Here's another one. Here is another one. Yeah, Liam Sutherland. He's been here a few years, fourth year on the team, and his batting average and even 400 right now. Coming into this season, everybody was well aware how important he'd be to this club, and he's come through in a big way. A lot more responsibility on his shoulders. This year, able to collect gold in the National College Baseball Championship, now taking on a leadership position. And he's just such a all good around, uh, all good, all well-rounded good ball player. <laughs> Excuse me, but yeah, he does it all with the glove, the bat. He's got the run speed too. He's a great player, and Humber's definitely thankful if they got this guy. A real five-two, five-tool guy. So much fun to see him work in that batter's box, but every time there's a throw coming from center field, I hold my breath. One of the strongest arms I've seen throughout the OCAA. Sutherland in tough here. 2-2, Barclay's been impressive thus far. See DeBanning behind him in the box. Two, two, just high. Us uh, full count, he's gonna walk. Yeah, Paul, he's on the full count there. Liam Sutherland will trot on down to first. Stephen Barclay makes his first mistake of the day. Up steps to Banning. He was a hero in the national gold medal game last season. Chance to spark some life into the Hawks today. Sutherland is the base runner on first. Leads the team with seven steals. Has been caught three times. Be interested to see just how aggressive Jeff Gibbs wants to be early on here. Stealing at 70%, definitely something you like. 0-1, high and inside. Don't imagine he's going to be too aggressive here with two outs. But if that ball makes its way back to the backstop, you know he's going to be on his way to second. Absolutely. We've seen pass balls benefit the Falcons already in this game, scored a run off a Huff Wild pitch. Swung on by DeBanning. Catcher Verhoeven has already popped to his feet once, trying to keep Sutherland honest on first. Something to keep an eye on. Runner goes. Throw not in time. Seemingly got there before Sutherland, but that evading slide gets Sutherland in there. Yeah, he made it in there just in time. I thought he might have been beat out there by that throw, but Sutherland sure knows what he's doing on that base path. Yeah, NFL Sunday is until tomorrow, but that's a pretty nice swim move we saw there. <laughs> so 
manufacturing offense any way possible here as Sutherland uses that agility to reach second. Mark it down as his eighth stolen bag of the season. Life got a whole lot easier for DeBanning at the plate. Eight RBI on the season, now with a runner in scoring position. Two two swung on, dribbled down to third base. Going to be a tough play with the banning speed. They'll just get Dennis by a step. Sutherland stranded on second. That'll do it for the first inning. Fanshawe Falcons two, Humber Hawks zero. Yeah, I don't know what it is about that third base side, but all three Humber outs going to that third baseman and third baseman there not making too many mistakes. Hawks hitters seem to be a little bit of a head of Stephen Barclay today. That's exactly right, Andrew, pulling that ball down the third base line today. But then again, we see after a few times, through the order, these batters will start to figure out the man on the hill, make some adjustments at bat to at bat. Let's see if Huff can bounce back here. A little bit of a rough start to this one. Through 21 pitches, 11 of those were strikes, 10 balls. So I'd like to see a little bit more strikes. You want guys pitching at around 70% of their strike of their pitches being strikes. So we can see if we got to see if he can regain that control here in the second. Going up against the bottom of the lineup, he'll have a good shot. Yeah, that's exactly it. If there's a guy you can trust to Bounce back by by no means a bad inning. I mean, he was hit around hard, but did allow some base runners and a couple runs did score. This is a fourth-year veteran. This is a guy that's been around the program. Really one of the faces of Humber baseball. you got to think he's got a pretty good head on his shoulders to try to bounce back here. Josh Arce. First baseman for these Falcons. And to do battle with Huff. First pitch outside. Huff evens the count here. After that first inning, you know Huff. Wants to retire the leadoff hitter to get off to a strong start. But Arce leads this team in walks. Definitely has got good eyes, showing it off here. Count now three and one. The control really hasn't been what we've seen out of Steve Huff this year with a patient hitter like Arce. Tough guy to work around. Arce thought he got himself the walk there. Instead, it's strike two. Huff able to work the count full here. Three, two in there. Steve Huff with his first K of the day. Did it well there. Did a great job working the count. Was behind early on, but... Just kept at it and eventually worked his way to the strikeout. Good job. Derek Smith, second baseman, looks in at strike one. A native of Wyoming is Derek Smith. Midwestern guy now in southern Ontario. I hear baseball is pretty big in Wyoming. A lot of flat ground out there. One of the ideal sports for that. <laughs> that one punched in the left field, tracking and making the grab out there is Dennis DeBanning. So this is exactly what you want to see out of Steve Huff. Here in inning number two, a strikeout and a flyout. 
Yeah, great job here for him to really try and get back in this ball game after a shaky start. And if he can keep going like this, I think the Hawks are going to be just fine this afternoon. And the bats will need to get going at some point. But so far, so good for Huff in this second inning. That one just pops over Huff's head to Bursiel. Over to Wilcox in time to end the top of the inning. So Huff and the Hawks with a big response here as they try to close this gap. Quick one, two, three inning there by Huff. Only throwing 12 pitches. Definitely the pace that you want to work with. And now hopefully that gets Humber's confidence going a little bit going into the bottom of the second. And let's see if they can finally get some runs on the board. It's a big spot there for a 12 pitch inning. He had to throw quite a bit in that first inning to get out of there. Trying to keep that pitch count low. Obviously some strong relievers on the side of Humber, but if you're Steve Huff, I'm sure you want to go deep into this one. Absolutely. Any starter worth his time is going to want to go out there all seven innings in college ball. So I imagine Stephen Huff being a veteran especially wanting to go out all seven innings. But, of course, Humber's got some options if he does need to come out of this one. Yeah, I've known a lot of starting pitchers in my day, and I think every single one of them thought every game was going to be a complete game shutout. So, <laughs> And you love that. Of course, yeah, that's the mentality you want coming into here. For Barclay, he's just trying to keep pace with Huff here. Really strong in that first inning. you got to think there's some chatter in that Humber dugout. What are you seeing? What tips can you give me? What's his breaking ball like? What's his location? Where's that ball coming from? The arm angle, all that good stuff. Yeah, Humber's going to want to try and solve him pretty quickly. Didn't get a hit in that first one, just Sutherland getting on board on a base on balls. But I know these Humber guys, they're going to try and get on him early and often here in this inning. Might be easier said than done after a strong start, though. So here is Hunter Bisser. The designated hitter for Jeff Gibbs and the Hawks today. Fourth year player trying to spark the Hawks offense. Barclay continues his strong day with strike one. Yeah, his control looks like he's on. 12 strikes, eight balls so far. You said it pregame, Andrew. He's not a guy who's really going to blow the ball by you. But his control and pitch selection has been something to watch today. Bisser takes that one high and inside. One, two in the dirt. Nice block by Verhoeven behind the dish. Not the most necessary blocks with the bases clear, but hey, a little practice never hurts. Yeah, exactly, gotta keep, keep up in shape, make sure that you do do well in case the opportunity arises that you do gotta block the plate when the runners when runners are on the bases. Foul tip into the glove retires Hunter Bisser. That's the first strikeout of the afternoon for Barclay. The Hawks have not had an answer for Barclay yet in this one. Haven't yet been through the order. So Ty Martin, if there is any man who could break out a hit here. Hard hit ball by the first base line, corralled, race to the bag. Barclay will take it. Two outs down quickly. Yeah, just like that, shut down Humber's best hitter this season. Yeah, that was a quick at bat, but I still want to get in some fun Ty Martin facts. <laughs> 462 average, second best in the league, and also 
third best in program history. He's hitting the cover off the ball. Even his ground outs are scorchers. <laughs> Cam Wilcox takes that one high. First base for the Hawks, everyday player. That ball struck to the shortstop, plenty of time. The throw high and wild, so Wilcox will reach. The Hawks' bats really haven't been able to figure out Stephen Barclay, but an error is what they need to get a base runner. Finally get things going here in the second inning for the Hawks, but they're going to need a lot more. Barclay doing really well, just couldn't get the field to back him up there. With two outs here, Wilcox is on first. Does not have a stolen base this year. Not much of a running threat. Jeff Siams at the dish. And with two outs, I really can't imagine Wilcox going for it here. Siams more known for his defensive capabilities as the team's everyday catcher. Batting 212 on the season. Throwing error by McGuire Gordon. Lisa Cam Wilcox on first. Siam takes that one inside once again. Showing some good plate discipline here, trying to stretch out this inning. This is really only the first batter that Barclay's been having trouble with his control. And there it is once again. Good call, Andrew. A four-pitch walk for Jeff Siams, and all of a sudden the Hawks are cooking here. Time for the first-year player to get up aboard here and try and advance those runners. Leif Bercy will see what he's got in store. A first-year player out of Niagara Falls. More, more known for his glove, but can definitely swing a bat. Nice block behind the plate by Verhoeven. We'll keep the base runners on first and second. Wilcox on second, Siams on first. Bursiel trying to break the ice for the Hawks here. That ball outside, you mentioned Barclay's control here. First time, really, we've seen him struggle. So we'll have a meeting on the mound. Yeah, I don't know why that is. Maybe just the uh, error there by the shortstop getting in his head after that runner getting aboard. But, yeah, really the only time he's struggled with his control. We're going to see if he can get it back here with his meeting on the mound. Yeah, with different teams coming through, we've seen it a few times where pitchers really seem to be in control. And then as soon as those base runners get on behind them, they're looking over their shoulder. They're a little too preoccupied and don't have that same laser focus into home plate. Yeah, especially with two outs, you just got to keep focused on the run, runner at the plate. And if you take care of him, you take care of the inning. Especially with a couple runners with not too much speed on the base paths. Barclay down in this count. Trying to work his way back. That won't do it, high and outside. And we've seen it there as soon as that pitch was released by Barclay, he gave that quick little look over the shoulder to Wilcox on second. Perhaps these base runners are affecting him. And that's now two straight 4-0 walks by Barclay. So now with two outs, all of a sudden the base is juiced by the Hawks. And they haven't really got it done with the bats at all. It's been base on balls and Fanshaw errors. Yeah, Barclay still got, got the no-hitter going on despite the bases loaded. With the leadoff man aboard here. 
Could be dangerous. We'll see. Now right, Becky trying to even the score here. Hawks with their first real scoring opportunity of the day is that one. Pates the inside plate. Now Rebecca leads the team with his 10 RBIs. Chance to extend that. A dribbler down the first base line. Just foul. Seen a few times Arce for the Falcons really likes to play tight to that first base line. Not too many balls will squeak through that gap. Narbeki behind, 0-2. Nice work there just to stay alive. Yeah, two strikes, just got to worry about protecting the plate. Eventually, just got to wait for your pitch. Bases loaded, two outs. 0-2 count for Narbeki. Hawks trying to get on the board. Now instruct to second base. The play will be at first. Now Rebecca could not leg that one out to the Hawks. Leave the bases loaded. Scoreboard still reads zero. And three runners stranded on base. That's four in total now for the Hawks. They've been able to get runners on base, but just having trouble advancing them and getting them home. We'll see if that's a trend that continues. Yeah, the bats really haven't come alive at all today. A throwing error and two walks load the bases. Unable to cash any of those runs. So what will it take to figure out Stephen Barclay? He struggled a little bit with control once there are runners on, but able to settle down and get out of that inning. With Nara Becky recording that last out, they are turning over the, the batting order. So now that each player has seen Barclay once, maybe a chance to make some pitch-to-pitch uh, -pitch adjustments. The good news there is that each inning, Barclay's had to force, been forced to pitch 19 and 20 pitches. So you get that pitch count working up, so you might have to force them to dig into that bullpen a little earlier than they would have liked. Huff being a little more efficient here in that first two innings despite allowing those two runs. So we'll see if that plays a factor. Yeah, not an ideal inning number one for Steve Huff, but really settled down. 12 pitch inning in the top of the second. But came out strong in that second inning. No hits, no walks. Perfect inning. Business Good as usual. Strikeout. Yeah, nice to see him settle into this one. Just has really been the model of consistency for this club. Just a guy, day in, day out, you know what you're going to get. A hard worker that's all baseball. But Fanshawe turning it over back to the top of the lineup, so we'll see if they can jump on Huff again or if he comes out stronger against them the second time around. Yeah, the Falcons hit Huff hard first time through the order. Got to think they have some confidence on their side. Showing bunt. Three Hawks converge, no play at first. A pitcher perfect bunt laid down there by the leadoff hitter. So McGuire McGordon. McGuire Gordon, that is. Come on, they add the extra ma. Leadoff hitter on with a bunt base hit. Not something you see every day. Yeah, that move takes some confidence to pull off. You got to have A, the bunting skills, and B, the speed. And he had both there. Whole lot of wheels. Already itching. Taking that lead off from first base. Yet another bunt shown. This time from the hitter in the two hole, Cattle and Morin. So perhaps Fanshawe has done a little bit of scouting. Seen on that bunt. Siams, Huff, and Ty Martin all charge in. Bunt once again. Bunt straight, strew it, straight through it for the strike. Throw over by Siams to first, not in time. And Ty Martin playing 
little more deep near that third base bag. So definitely not anticipating the bunt here with two strikes. Showing some aggression early on, but that would be some wild aggression to lay down the bunt here with two strikes against. I talked about how it took confidence to go for that leadoff bunt there for a base hit, and that would take a, just a super amount of confidence to do it with two strikes. Yeah, and if you're head coach Brian Harvey, why not be aggressive? This hasn't been really your best season. You're up against a tough squad. You're squeaking out a 2 nothing lead right now. You probably know that won't be enough after seven innings. Yeah, you got no one to go for. Really go for the jugular. Grounder to Bursial. Gets the runner on second. Throw over to first. Not in time. Just able to leg that one out is Morin. So the Hawks trying to turn two there, unsuccessful. Throw just a half step late. Good job to get off that lead runner though. Always go for the fielder's choice when he can in that situation. Absolutely, nice work. By Bursial there, he's showing off the glove a couple times in today's contest. Another dribble to Bursial, let's see what he's got. Shovel over to second, no play at first. Back-to-back -back fielder's choice for the Fanshawe Falcons. Huff really got the control working this inning, though. Five strikes, no balls. Yeah, you got a strong defense behind you. Balls in play will result in outs more often than not. And that's what we've seen. The DH, Josh Hare, steps in, runner on first. Falcons are appearing to be a little bit more aggressive at the dish against Huff than they were in that first inning. Sat back and saw a lot more pitches. This time swinging free. Once again showing that bunt, pulls it back. Runner goes, throw by Siams. Not in time. That'll get by LaBelle. Yeah, just a little bit of hesitation there by Siams on that throw allowed the runner to get in there for the stolen base. So perhaps a little hit and run action going on there as Josh Hare appeared to show Bun as the runner went. Yeah, I think that was definitely the plan. So we talked about the potential for aggressive base running as appears we might have a broken belt there on the slide. That's no bueno. <laughs> Avoiding a Potentially embarrassing situation there on second base. That's Braden Halford getting the new leather strap around his waist. Yeah, definitely won't want to pull a Steve Lyons out there. <laughs> if you haven't seen that, just search it up on <laughs> YouTube. You're in for a treat. That's an old school reference there. I love that. So with Halford's pants now affixed to his waist. We're back to the action here. Josh Hare at the dish. Ball in the dirt once again. I don't think they have any more extra belts, so Halford's <laughs> going to stay on second. Huff having a little bit of control issues here with this batter. Rio pitch misses, so a four-pitch walk issued by Steve Huff. We've seen it with the Hawks in the last half inning. Now with two outs, the Falcons are getting something going. Hawks couldn't capitalize on their opportunities. Let's see what the Falcons have in store. Pitch outside, throw to first by Siams. Nice idea, big healthy lead over there. Not in time. Yeah, Simes had to make a quick decision there to go for the runner off the bag on first. Almost got him. Good idea with two outs. Here, the runner on first. Halford on second. The 1 0 pitch in the dirt, blocked by Simes.
Huff went from throwing five straight five straight strikes to six straight balls here in the third. So tail of two Huffs here in the third. Trying to get that consistency down here is Huff. Paying a lot of attention to that runner on second. Time called. Huff had his focus on the runner at second, turned around already in mid-release. Umpire had his hands up. So a dead ball, dead ball, no pitch there. Judd Walker, we talked about his offensive accolades earlier in the day. That's a hard struck ball through the gap into right. They're going to send the runner home. Throw coming in from right. Won't be in time. Standing and scoring is Braden Halford. Yeah, nice hit there to find the gap between first and second. Puts him on first base and then advances the runner, scoring a run and putting one on third. Judd Walker with his sixth RBI on the season. Scores the third run for these Fanshawe Falcons as they extend their lead. The Hawks aren't out of the woods just yet. Runners on the corner, two outs here. All this damage came with two outs in this inning. Huff didn't miss by much on that one. Hawks trying to work their way out of a jam here. The 2-0. Symes paying a lot of attention to these base runners. Faked the snap throw over to first, gave a look to third. Perhaps trying to catch that leadoff runner. Roven thought he had a walk there, but that was in there for a strike. <laughs> yeah, that took me a minute. For Hooven, just kind of tossed the bat and then stood there. Didn't walk to first, didn't take off. He had me for a minute. Yeah, right as he tossed the bat, <laughs> that power signaled strike. A little miscommunication there. That one fouled well out of play. For Hooven staying alive. Good job by Huff to work the count back. Was down 3-0, but full count now. Going to be a big pitch here coming up. Absolutely. Perhaps the biggest of the game here for Huff. Full count. Two outs. Time called at home. Huff working a little bit slower here with the base runners on. Yeah, we're used to seeing him pitch pretty quickly. 3-2 is low in the dirt. A familiar scene here at Connervale. Two outs, bases loaded. This time it's the Falcons. Joss Arce with a big opportunity here for the Falcons. A chance to blow this game wide open. Falcons with a 3-0 lead, three runners on the bags. That one in for a low strike. Huff knows he's got to get this runner out. He can't extend this inning any further. And of course, get your team a chance to get on this board, get a run on there. Already a tough spot, just playing damage control. That's a big block by Sions behind the dish. That ball reaches the backstop. It's likely a 4-0 lead for these Falcons. 
pretty deep backstop here at Condorville. A lot of space out there for the catchers. The 1-1 one, one pitch, low and outside. Huff just trying to find the plate here. Two one low as well. Hitters count here for Arce. Big RBI opportunity. Hawks playing damage control. Three one offering. Swung on and missed once again. Huff. Nice work to move himself to a full count. It's Definitely the pitch he wanted there. Yeah, he's found himself behind quite a few times today, but when he's needed it most, he's been able to battle back. Big moment in this ball game. The payoff pitch. Once again, time called. So Huff really being methodical on the mound right now, really thinking everything over, not rushing it in anything. Fanshawe hitters getting a little bit unsettled. Two outs, the three two. Hit to third, Martin charges in, throw over to first in time. That is a massive out for Steve Huff and the Humber Hawks. The lead remains at three. Falcons strand a runner on every bag just as the Hawks did a half inning earlier. Twenty-four pitches in that inning by Huff. Not what you want to see by him. That's fifty-seven on the afternoon for him. Worth noting, still early in this ball game, but Barclay's got the no-no going. No hitter. I mean, he's a Falcon, so I see. Feel like I can say it out loud, right? The old no hitter jinx. I'll go for it. <laughs> we pay for our dividends. So it hasn't exactly been the prettiest of no nos. The Hawks loaded the bases off a throwing error and two walks last inning, but yet to record a hit off the third-year starter Stephen Barclay. Three runs on most days really isn't a tall task for these Humber Hawks, but for whatever reason, bats have gone a little cold on this cool fall day. Yeah, don't know what it is. Could be that uh, Fanshawe really feels that their backs are against the wall, trying to battle for those last few playoff spots as we approach the end of the season. But the two-thirds way mark there, which is when really crunch time really starts and the wins start to matter a little more and get a little harder. Yeah, I wouldn't say by any means that the Humber Hawks would Overlook the visiting Fanshawe Falcons. We mentioned earlier they've been provincial medalists in every single year of their program's existence, but perhaps the Hawks are sitting pretty. They're 11 and 2. The record's pretty fine. Fanshawe is really the team here with everything to play for. And maybe that's what we've been seeing. Wouldn't be surprised if the Fanshawe mantra coming into this one is must win. Absolutely. About as close as you can be. Season on the line, fifth in the OCAA. Top four, get a playoff position. Under 500, and it's pretty tough to do that and get into the playoffs. LaBelle fouls that one about 10 feet to my right. Bell falls behind, 1-2 here. 
Hawks desperately need a leadoff hitter. That one high and inside. Count even at two. LaBelle has a couple stolen bags to his name. Hawks behind, likely to be aggressive with their base runners. That one skied into right field. Might be a play out there. Too far to reach for Arce, the first baseman. That one drops right near the Hawks Nation table there. Yeah, they don't have their usual 10 out there today. Don't have the same fly ball protection as they <laughs> normally do. Yeah, Got to be a little bit more on the lookout here this afternoon. Head on a swivel for all the fans and athletes out here. That one looked like it was a strike, but I'm probably saying that was high. Yeah, there's been a few close misses today. Home plate umpire really seems to be keeping a tight zone. I'm sure much of the chagrin is of either starting pitcher. As long as he keeps the strike zone consistent, though, it should be okay. LaBelle grounds that one to the shortstop, Coop. Plenty of time over to Arce to record the out. Sam LaBelle is retired. Stephen Barclay continues his strong day. So these strong Hawks hitters have struggled against Barclay today. Here's Sutherland. Someone's got to get him out of this fog. Maybe it's Liam. The interesting stat for Sutherland, more triples than doubles on the year. You don't see that too often. Two triples, one double on the year. Yeah, you don't see that too often, but that's a sign of a great hitter. And a whole lot of speed. Sutherland provides both. One, one, misses. Sutherland now ahead. Sutherland having a pretty good afternoon already with the base on balls and a stolen base, a stolen base earlier in the first. One of the few bright spots for these Hawks. Foul balls seem to be raining down all around us behind home plate. That's a hard struck ball into left field. Going back is the left fielder on the warning track. That one's going to drop in just in front of the fence. Liam Sutherland has himself extra bases, going for his third triple of the year. And he's got it. Liam Sutherland sliding in safely to third. That ball went a mile out there into left field. Tracking back was Judd Walker. Couldn't get to it. The first hit of the day for the Humber Hawks. A big time triple from Liam Sutherland. And Barclay says no no to the no no. That jinx worked. Should have said it earlier. Yeah, that's why we're here. <laughs> With only one out, a really big opportunity here for Humber to finally get that first run on the board. Finally, that cold car engine is kind of turned over here. Sutherland starts the party for the Hawks here. DeBannon going to be the man trying to cash him. Number 16 looking for his ninth RBI on the year. Hitters count now for DeBannon. He could afford to be a little picky here. Trying to advance that runner. Takes that one high. Good plate discipline. The 
Banning's got himself some options here with a 3-1 count. Struck on and hit through the shortstop. Liam Sutherland comes in to score. DeBanning looking at second. That ball got by the center fielder. DeBanning with an RBI stand-up double. And the Humberhawks are on the board. It's a 3-1 ball game. Steven Barclay came into this inning with a no-hitter intact. A triple by Liam Sutherland. And a double by Dennis DeBanning. Puts Humber's first run on the board. With D.H. Hunter Bisser now up to the plate. Chance here for Humber to get some real damage done. DeBanning in scoring position. And another ball might find the gap. It's dropping in front of the center fielder. DeBanning's going to look home, held up by the third base coach. Hunter Bisser drops one in front of the center fielder, Catalin Morin. And these Hawks bats are all of a sudden cooking. Three hits in a row for the Hawks. I think they may have found something in Barkley's delivery that they liked. Yeah, we talked a little bit about how important that first time through the order is, just kind of getting a scouting report on the opposition. And I don't know what's going on in that Humber Hawks dugout, but they for sure figured out something. Sutherland, the banning, and now Bisser with the back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back base knocks. It doesn't get any easier for Barkley here. Humber's best hitter, Ty Martin, up to the plate. No other man you'd rather have in this position. Yeah, if he hits this one for extra bases, it's likely going to tie this one up. Hawks come into this inning with a 3-0 deficit. Now the go-ahead run is at the dish, represented by Ty Martin. Still just one out. That one in there for strike one. Bisser does not have a stolen base attempt on the year, but you got to think with the Benning on third, maybe he does go here. Trying to coax for Hooven to throw on down to second. Martin down quickly here, 0-2. One out, time to protect the plate. Martin not a grounded to double play candidate, so definitely want to get him to strike out so that he doesn't get that uh, chance for the runner to score here with the sacrifice play. Looked a little bit like a pitch out there, maybe just missing the location high and outside, but it seems as though the Falcons are well aware of Bisser over there on first. Maybe anticipating that steal coming. Bisser hasn't attempted to throw to, uh, excuse me, steal a base yet this season though, so I don't think he'll be much of a threat. Swung on and missed by Tara Martin. He'll go down swinging. Just what you wanted if you're Barclay. Not the at bat Ty was looking for. That's Barclay's second strikeout of the afternoon. Fresh face in this ball game, Aiden Murphy. Gonna get this at bat. So Murphy taking Cam Wilcox's spot in the lineup. Interesting move here by Coach Gibbs. We'll see if it pays off. That throw back to first goes over the head of the pitcher. Rolls to third. Third base coach telling the banning, pay attention over there. That could have been an opportunity. Yeah, 
Yeah, in a tight ball game like this one, you don't know when the next chance to score will be. A lot different inning here with two outs now. Murphy sees that big looping curveball come in for strike one. Murphy batting a cool 344 on the year. Another looping curve fouled away. Two straight batters now where Barclay has been up in the count, 0-2. Uh, Murphy behind, 0-2. Takes a look at that one, strike three on the inside. Murphy didn't like the call, gonna have a chat with Blue. Third strikeout of the day now for Barclay. So the Hawks started to really get something going there. Only able to score the one run, so the lead is cut to two. Falcons maintain that 3-1 lead. Sutherland, DeBanning, and Bisser. Your base hits in that half inning. The first real extended break of the day for Steve Huff. Hasn't had too much time to sit around in that dugout with Stephen Barclay making quick work of this Humber offense. Trying to get back warm on this cool October day here in Connerville. MLB already in the heat of the playoff pitchers. The fun just getting started here with OCAA baseball. Yeah, and the closing stages here, the final third of the season as the race to the playoffs is officially on. Humber sitting in first place, trying to stay there. So we know playoffs is top four they get in, double elimination tournament. So having that first seed is going to be so important, and you know that Humber's going to want to finish up strong. Yeah, that's going to be a fun close to end this season. Hawks gonna try to defend that OC AA gold medal. And hey, why not defend nationally while you're at it? The Humber Hawks once again, the hosts of the National College Baseball Championship right here at Connor Vale Park. Such a cool moment last year. Boys able to bring it home in front of the home crowd. An opportunity to do it again this year. Yeah, got the double last year. They're gonna wanna do it again this year. If they could go back to back, that would definitely be a special moment. It really has been the St. Clair Saints that have been seen as the best of the best. When it comes to OCAA baseball, they won the first five OCAA championships. The Hawks, the only other team to win gold. That dribbler down to Aiden Murphy. Corral to record the first out. That's Derek Smith going down. But yeah, now it's the Humber Hawks opportunity to really prove, hey, we're the top dogs here. We're the king of the hill. You got to come beat us if you want to be Lay claim to the best. And of course, having that home field advantage is going to be a huge advantage for them at the end of the month. Yeah, we got lucky with the October weather today. Sun shining, a little bit of a breeze coming through the outfield wall. Hopefully it's the same for the NCBC. Think back to that gold medal game last year and just how cold and windy and rainy it was. Get your parkas ready. Yeah, a lot of Gatorade baths, a lot of water baths after that championship. <laughs> I'm sure there's a few colds, <laughs> a couple sinus infections after that celebration. Yeah, someone definitely got caught something. Round ball there, corralled by LaBelle. The bare hand play over to first, not in time. Sam LaBelle. Flashing the fancy stuff there, his throw just late. Yeah, 
Harris Adamu, the runner on first base. The Falcons turning over their lineup here. Yeah, that would have been a beautiful out there by LaBelle, but runner just beat that one out. Yeah, he had some hesitation there. Runner goes, throw by Siams. Safe is the runner. Stolen base for Adamu. Falcons have a lot of play for here. Showing some aggression on the base pass. No fear of running into outs. Runner now in scoring position for McGuire. Gordon. That gets right through Ty Martin on third. DeBanning's charging it left. They're going to send the runner. Throw by DeBanning. Runner retreats the third. A smart play as that was on a rope from Dennis in right field. But the result, a one-out double. McGuire, Gordon. Gordon having a pretty good afternoon in a single and now double. That was a scorching ball to the hot corner there. Going through Ty Martin, great work by DeBanning. Out and left there though to get to that ball quickly and fire it in. Big swing and a miss from Catalan Morin. Morin's already scored in the first inning. Made it on board on a fielder's choice in the third. The Hawks want to maintain in this ball game. This is a big half inning here. Throw to third. He's out. What a play by Jeff Siams. He's been looking for it all day, that snap throw. Ferris Adamu caught napping on third. Disbelief by the Falcons. That Simes is, is so quick. Oh. Sorry, Adam, but Simes is so quick there behind the plate. That's exactly it. As a catcher, you pretty much know on that pitch, hey, I'm throwing over here. But the sign is, is that you want to hold off any, you don't want to tip your hand, essentially, is what I'm saying. You want to pop to your feet and get that throw out before they even know what's coming. Now, as a base runner, it just takes that split second. Or maybe you just look the other way, look into the dugout. Big strike out there for Huff. And what a way for the Hawks to get out of this inning. The throw over to third. Huff fires right back with the strikeout. And all of a sudden, the Falcons went from pressuring to being done. Nice quick inning there by Huff. Only 10 pitches thrown. 67 on the afternoon so far. So not a bad place to be with uh, four innings in the bag. Yeah, a quick turn of events here. Nine strikes, only one ball that inning. Huff being efficient. Looking for some help from his defense, and he's really gotten it when necessary. It's been a day of missed opportunities, really, for either side. Plenty of base runners left stranded. Get a look at Barkley back on the mound warming up before he gets into the fourth inning. It's been pretty good, but that pitch count starting to run up a little bit. Yeah, that last inning really the first time, but the Hawks hit him really at all. He had the no-no going into that inning. So the Hawks offense may be just starting to come to life here. The base runners have been there, just the RBIs haven't. One run on the board. Jeff Symes in the box right now. He made that big throw over to third to record the second out of that last half inning. Now with an opportunity to get the offense kick started.
foul ball to begin the at-bat. Siams and Bursiel do up. Then the top of the order in Narabeki. That's a hard hit ball to the shortstop. Siams trying to leg this one out. Ball gets through once again, gets through Arce. They're going to ward second base there as the ball goes out of play. So once again, not a base hit, but an error. Another throwing error for McGuire Gordon. I believe that's his second of the day. That is his second of the day. Ball's come to him three times, only able to make the out on one of those. Not great efficiency by this fan shot defense, and maybe that's the opportunity the Hawks need. They haven't helped themselves too much offensively in this one, but have got a hand from some Falcon errors. Strange, too, because Gordon coming into this one at 974 fielding percentage. For whatever reason, maybe the Hawks just in his head. Just an off day, perhaps, unable to rein in that cannon from short. Of course, you can't be at your best all the time, as nice as that would be. Pass ball here. And all of a sudden, with no out, Siam standing on third. Offense getting off to a hot start already in the dugout. Absolutely loving that. They're looking for a reason to cheer in this game. They've been awful quiet. Not a whole lot going the Hawks' way, but possibly a chance here. Yeah, that base runner just 90 feet away from scoring and turning this into a run, one-run ball game. Bercio with a dribbler. Foul down the first base line. Falcons awful lucky that one went foul. Could have been trouble. That was a bit of a tweener ball halfway up the first base line. Yeah, I'm not sure which way the Falcons would have gone there, but someone probably would have been out. Just like you said, a big break there. Ursiel looking for his first RBI on the season. Looping curveball misses ball two. He got on board with a walk in the second inning, but was left stranded. Ursiel with the knock foul there. Seems to be seeing the ball well in this at bat, battling tough here against Barclay. Got to be well aware of how crucial Siams is on third. That's a big run in this ball game. That one's in the dirt. Siams thought about it, won't go for it. For a split second there, took that first step. Retreats though. First game update from women's softball. The Humber softball team in Windsor today playing the St. Clair Saints won 11 nothing by Mercy Rule. So this men's offense struggling to get going, but maybe they sent it all down to Windsor with the ladies as Bercio gets on bag. The second walk. Runners on the corner, still none out here. Now turn it over, Steven Narabeki coming up. Hasn't got on base yet today, flew out to and foul ground to third baseman, his first one, then grounded out to second and is in the second at bat in the second inning. Let's this, see if he can finally get it going here. Yeah, Sorry, this, Adam. Hey, no worries. I mean, this hasn't been the inning that Barclay's really been looking for. Hey, he's going up against the last two in the order, hoping to get some quick two outs maybe for turning it towards the top of the order and doing battle against the big hitters. But instead, he hasn't recorded an out. Both guys have reached safely. Siams. Already finds himself all the way over on third. Perhaps the biggest start adversity for Stephen Barclay in today's game. Two arms getting warmed up in the fan shot bullpen. 
Brian, Hi Brian Harvey going to start managing his, ar his arms, it appears. Throw over to first, not in time. Sliding back safely is Leaf. The Hawks have found themselves in familiar, familiar situations just this in today's game. They've left some runners stranded. Another throw over to first. Seem awful preoccupied with Bursial over there. A common play with runners on the corner is to send the runner on first, trying to tempt that throw from the catcher. And a chance to cash the run from third. See what Jeff Gibbs has in store. Big swing and a miss from Narabeki. The 1-1. One, one. Skied into foul territory. Could be playable for Arce. He gets under it and makes the crab. Symes tagged up on third, but didn't head too far down that line. Narbeki's troubles in the batter's box continue here today. 0 for 3. Not common for him. Yeah, a bit of an off day, and we can say that for a few of these Hawks hitters. The usual studs have gone a little bit cold today. Seen the middle of the order get going a bit. Sutherland to Banning and Bisser, but other than that, been a quiet day at the office. Yeah, another one here, LaBelle grounded out in both of his at-bats, the third and shortstop. Still only one out, so a couple chances here for the Hawks to advance Siam's home. LaBelle with nine RBI on the season. He represents the go-ahead run. Once again, a throw over to first. Siams down the third base line, just able to slide back in time. So we're seeing some aggression on the base pass there. That was a good heads-up play by Arce on first base to know that Siams was off the bag by a lot there. Humbert Duggo trying to raise the energy here. LaBelle finds himself ahead, 2-0. That one outside, ball three. So we've seen it before in this game, Stephen Barclay, when runners get on, his control seems to suffer. Perhaps a same situation here as he's down 3-0. Ball four in the dirt. And with just one out here in the bottom of the fourth inning, Humber Hawks once again load the bases. Brian Harvey is going to come out and have a chat with his starter. We see an arm walking in from the bullpen. Looks as though we'll have a pitcher change. There's the exchange of the baseball. So that'll be the end of the day for Steven Barclay. An awful good performance through three and one-third innings. Through 79 pitches today, so his arm definitely got a workout here this afternoon. Yeah, that's not a quick day out here. Nearly 80 pitches, couldn't get through four innings. Carry that no-hitter into the third inning. Four being hit around a little bit. Can't really fault him the way he's pitched. He's put himself in line for a win. A 
looks like it. So here's Adam Boyle for the Fanshawe Falcons coming in for relief of Barclay. Four appearances on the year for Boyle. Has pitched seven and one third, a 2.86 ERA. Not going to be a fun situation for Boyle once we get going. Hawks have the bases loaded, one down. Tying run on second. Never easy to enter a ball game with only one out and the bases loaded, but if you just get that one ground ball, it can help you out a lot here in this situation. Let's see what Boyle's got. In a tough situation as is, and you look into home plate and standing beside the dish is Liam Sutherland. I'm sure not the guy you want to face first and foremost coming into a ball game. Sutherland already with a triple in this game. That one in the dirt, but blocked by Verhoeven. Now three triples and a double on the season for Liam. Definitely has some extra base pop in that bat. One for one on the day with a triple and a base on balls. He scored the only run this afternoon. Adam Boyle, his first three pitches of this ball game, all low. 3-0 the count, so not the start Boyle was looking for. Called a strike, Sutherland thought he was awarded the base on balls there. Instead, it's a 3-1 count. Last thing Boyle wants is to walk home a run. That struck hard into right field, well foul. Sutherland got some good wood on that one. Liam Sutherland hoping to find some green grass and get the Hawks back into this ball game, the 3-2. Swing and a miss. Stays alive there though. Just a foul tip, hit off the catcher, Berhoven. This is where the Hawks really show off that are muscle there at the play. You got Sutherland and then DeBanning right after, so I would say pick your poison, but I just think you just got to go with the next guy. It's still going to be tough either way. No easy outs in this batting order. Up all low and away, ball four. Adam Boyle walks home a run. That's Jeff Siams coming in to score. He was the leadoff hitter in this inning. Hawks cut the lead to one here. That walk remains with the bases loaded. Dennis to Banning at the dish. Dennis is known for being clutch in situations just like this. I like the look of that first pitch swinging. See your pitch, why not go for it? That's exactly it. This is his first look at Boyle today. So we're going to miss. Dennis DeBanning quickly behind. 0-2 here. DeBanning 1 for 2 on the day with the double and an RBI. Tying run on third base. That one just misses. Boyle thought that one was in there. The entire fan shot dugout thought that was in there. Can't say I blame him. Brian Harvey charged out of the dugout. <laughs> Had a quick word with the home plate umpire, but 
Cooler heads will prevail here. That one low and away. Dennis DeBannon swinging and missing. A big second out in this ball game here for Adam Boyle. Boyle picks up his first strikeout. It's got to be in the back of Bisser's head. They've already left three runners stranded before in this game. They've had the bases loaded, unable to really cash in. Bisser punches one out into left field, tracking his left fielder and making the grab. Nice work by Boyle to get himself out of that one. That was a hard struck ball in the left field there. Judd Walker able to charge in and make the play. Humber Hawks leave the bases loaded. Jeff Siams was scored as a run came in on a walk. And the most thankful man there is Barclay. Boyle did a good, good job there being the mop-up man. Absolutely, now in line for the win officially is the starter, Stephen Barclay. Hawks now, we're gonna try to feed off the calm, cool demeanor of their starter, Steve Huff. They haven't found it easy to claw back in this ball game, but here they are down just one. With the offense struggling, you're gonna try to keep that deficit as thin as possible. Huff having to go through the heart of the order here. Three, four, five, Halford, Hare, and Walker all do up. Pretty safe to say those are the three top offensive pieces for Brian Harvey's squad. Last time this season that the Fanshawe Falcons will face the Humber Hawks. Up next for Humber, they're going to conclude their season series with the Durham Lords. Durham currently 6-6 six and six and holding on to that fourth place spot. They're the team that these Falcons are chasing. Top four go to the playoffs. Falcons sitting right now at five. A dribbler, DeBersio, called dead at the plate. Appears as though that was in foul territory before it scooted out into play. Good situation here for Huff. As always, looking for a quick inning. Quickly ahead, 0-2. That ball hit to Martin. Reaches out, seems to go through the glove. Martin can't believe it. Cabannon corrals it left field and brings it in. Lead off hitter on. Braden Halford reaches safely. Here's the DH, Josh Hare. 0 for 1 on the day with an RBI and a base on balls and a run. This is the second runner of this ball game. Wouldn't be surprised to hear Huff really attacking the bottom part of that strike zone here, trying to induce a ground ball. Double play would be huge in this situation. Huff with the 1-1. One, one. In there, strike two. Both batters this half inning. Huff has found himself ahead in the count. This 
Swung hard through the gap on the right part of the infield. Runner takes off to third. Throw just late. Ty Martin unable to lay down the tag. So these top hitters working nicely here for the Fanshawe Falcons, Halford and Hare. Both on safely. Runners at first and third, none out. Huff getting into a little bit of trouble here. Runners on the corners with no outs. Looks like he's going to have to get out of this one himself. And all of a sudden, that double play ball would now likely score a run. Yeah, you, you, got, you got to go for the strike out there. Just hope for a pop-up in the infield. Pop-up into deep center field. That one's carrying. And that one is out of here. Liam Sutherland was tracking, tracking, tracking towards the hedges out in deep center field. That one will find the greenery. So a huge home run from Judd Walker in this game. On the first pitch, no less. 6-2 is now your score. The Hawks just really inching closer and closer. Just getting into this ball game, down 3-0. Managed to battle back to make it a 3-2 score, and that one a three-run bomb to straightaway center field. Practically flew right over that 4-0-2 sign out there in Straight away center. That's another hard hit ball just over the head of Sam LaBelle. The shortstop appeared to get a glove on that one. And these Falcon hitters are really seeing the ball nicely out of Huff's hands at the moment. Got arm warming up in the Hawks' bullpen. See how much longer Huff will work into this game. Throw over to first, not in time. Aiden Murphy laying down the tag. The Hawks in two different innings left the bases loaded. All those runs, they weren't able to cash in, now staring them right back in the face. Showing Bunn at the dish. Scooped up by Martin Bobbles. Throw over to first just barely in time. Not an easy play for Ty. Yeah, that thought would have been enough time to get the runner safe, but great job there by Martin. We know he's got an arm there at third base. Yeah, that arm affords you a little bit more time. You've seen that quick bobble perhaps trying to bare hand that ball. Here's Derek Smith. He has a runner in scoring position. A three run home run by Judd Walker has made this a 6 2 ball game. Huff just trying to get out of this one unscathed anymore. Swing and a miss by Smith. This pitch coming up is going to be the 80th by Huff, so might be running on fumes by this point. Seeing the Fanshawe starter, Steven Barclay, head out of this game with 79 innings pitched. Huff now right in that area. That ball in the dirt, but blocked. Runner stays on second. Two one pitch from Huff. Throw back to second. Oh. Air mails that one. Wow, lucky break there that the runner didn't take off. Yeah, Sam LaBelle went airborne. That one was still a good three or four feet over his glove. So an awkward throw from the mound. You're on elevated ground there, trying to turn around and throw to a guy who's standing about two feet lower than you. It's pretty easy to sky that ball, and that's what we saw there. Yeah, luckily that it was the catcher there at second. If it was someone with a little more speed, it might have been off to third. Yet another hard hit ball into right field. That one's carrying. Just able to make the play on the warning track. 
Nora Becky able to track that one down, but that's two balls. Getting awfully close to the fence in this one. Yeah, not good there for Hoff. Looks like they're going to give him the opportunity to finish this inning, though. Some work still being done in that Humber bullpen. The arm appears to be Ian Swartz out there. Swartz has pitched just two innings. Curveball in there for Huff. That ball dribbles down to Ty Martin. Going to be a tough play. Runners already safe. It hasn't been the day defensively that we're used to seeing out of Ty Martin. One of the most sure-handed third basemen in the entire province. But we've seen a few today just kind of get through the glove. Jeff Gibbs is going to have a talk with his man, Huff. That's going to be it. That'll do it. Four and two-thirds innings pitched for Steve Huff on the day. 84 pitches on the day for Huff. Not the outing he's used to. No, but he put it all out there. Can't fault the man for that. Yeah, there's been some errors in the defensive area and as well. These Falcons players, you got to give them some credit. They're hitting the ball hard today. Seeing the ball well, great plate discipline. They got a lot to play for, and they've shown it. So it'll be a little bit of a break in the action here as they allow Swartz to get warm. Two appearances on the year for Ian. Those two innings pitched, three strikeouts to his name. With an 11 and two record, there's been a whole lot of save situations as far as the relief pitchers go. And it's really been the task of Riley Pollard. He leads the league with five saves on the year and has yet to allow an earned run in his sixth appearances. With Humber down by a pretty healthy margin here in the top of five, they'll turn to Swartz. Quick word from the home plate umpire, Ian Swartz, ready to get things started here. Here's the situation he's been thrown into. Top of five here. 6-2 ball game, the Hawks trail. Two outs, runners on the corners. Fresh count at the plate. Top of the order now for the Falcons. McGuire Gordon in there. Swartz behind 2 0 early. First three pitches, all balls for Ian Swartz. Gonna need to find the zone here. In there, strike one. Hawks still have some outs to work with here. Need to put up at least four in the next two innings. Nice work by Swartz here, down 3-0, now battled himself back to a full count. The 3-2 pitch. On the outside corner, that's a punch out for Ian Swartz. 
A big punch out indeed. That's a tough at bat there. McGuire Gordon couldn't believe that strike three call. He'll give the bat a toss, but nonetheless, first strikeout for Ian Swartz on the day. He gets the Hawks out of some trouble. A big three run home run by Judd Walker to straight away center field, put up three runs for the Fanshawe Falcons. They extend their lead to 6 2. Stephen Huff threw four and two thirds innings, 11 hits, six runs for them earned, two base on balls, two strikeouts, and allowed that home run. So a little bit of a hit and miss day for him. Yeah, you can't put too much fault on the short on the shoulders of Steve Huff. I mean, he pitched a pretty admirable game today. Maybe a little bit of struggle with control, was hit around a little bit, but really no fault of his own. That 1.98 ERA coming in today will take a hit. Came in top three in the OCAA ERE race. The good news for the Hawks, he's still got 12 chances to make up for that four run deficit. Now time for the Hawks to take all the tools out of the shed. Gonna need everything you got. Hawks best hitter on the year, Ty Martin. Gonna get things started off. Hard struck ball, gonna find the grass. Into left field, Ty digging for second. It's gonna be a close play here. Throw in time, but got through the second baseman, Derek Smith. So Ty Martin with a leadoff double to get things started. Exactly what the Humber Hawks needed. Wasting no time there, getting on that first pitch. I gotta say, Martin got awfully lucky there. The throw from the left fielder, Judd Walker, there with plenty of time, but just got under the glove of the second base with Derek Smith, allowed him to reach safely. Yeah, my heart skipped a beat there. He was <laughs> running right past that first base, but he was right. Yeah, he was going for two right out of the batter's box. I mean, he didn't even look in the left field. Just had his head down on the turn. So let's see what Aiden Murphy could do. Hawks have the work cut out for him. Came into this game in the third inning, struck out looking and is only at bat. Lays off that one, but it's in there for a strike. Hard struck ball between the shortstop and third baseman. Ty Martin comes into third, will stay tight there. Aiden Murphy with a no out single to move Ty Martin over from second to third. Cam Honfeld coming into this game. Taking the place of Jeff Symes. The second bench player in this game for the Hawks. Mentioned Aiden Murphy coming in the third inning. Now it's on field's opportunity here in the bottom of five. Takes strike one. Only five at bats on the season for Hanfield, but batting 400. Pretty good for a small sample size. 
Thought about that pitch, lays off, low and away. Nice work by Boyle here, quickly ahead, 0-2. Murphy on first, we'll see if he takes off to second. Martin on third, swing and a miss. Campanola warming up in the Fanshawe bullpen. Honfield goes down on strikes. First out of the inning for these Fanshawe Falcons. Conference on the mound here after that strikeout. There is an arm warming up in the Fanshawe bullpen. Looks like Boyle's gonna stay in this one though. Hey, he's been strong so far in this relief appearance. No surprise that Harvey wants to stick with him on the hill. No need to panic just yet for the Fanshawe head coach. A four run lead here. Left Burkiel, two base on balls on the day. Hasn't scored yet, though. Good eye there. Hawks have really find themselves behind in the counts today. Burkiel ahead now. Swing and a miss will even things up. Yeah, big hack there, but was way behind that one. That big breaking ball in there for a strike. The Hawks want back in this ball game. The bats are gonna have to get going sooner rather than later. Bersiel takes that one, low and in, 2-2. Runner goes to second, throw down by Verhoeven. So the Hawks take the free bag. Ty Martin didn't even think about heading for home on that throw down. Burkeel's now got two runners in scoring position, so a hit here would be huge. Would definitely make it a much more manageable ball game. That's a knock into the right center gap, running and making the play out there. The right fielder, Ferris Adamu, coming in to score on the sack fly, Ty Martin. So mark down an RBI for Leif Burkiel. Ty Martin with the run scored. The Hawks still alive in this one, a 6-3 ball game. Gonna have to double up their run total. Back we go to the top of the order. Steven Narabeki. Adam Boyle's location on those off speed pitches has been money today. That one didn't miss by much. Big swing from Steven into foul territory. Hitting a teammate over there, warming up. Verhoeven manages to keep that one in front of him. Ty Martin took a few anticipatory steps in towards home.
Apologies, that's Aiden Murphy over there on third base. I'm getting my 20s mixed up. Murphy 24 for the Hawks, Ty Martin 26. Ty Martin was on third, came in to score from that sack fly. Now Rebecca, nice work there, good plate discipline to earn himself the walk. He finally gets on board after being 0 for 3. So the Hawks just continue to chip away at this Fanshawe lead. They've been scrappy in this one. Just won't go away. Sam LaBelle fouls that one straight back. Bottom of five here at Connerville. Hawks have runners on the corner, two outs. Runner goes. Verhoeven will fake the throw down to second. Ada Murphy didn't take his foot off third base. No chance in risking it here when your outs are so precious in the late, late parts of this ball game. Seventh stolen base of the year for Narabeki. That one fouled straight back towards the bleachers. LaBelle represents the tying run. Swing and a miss, and how about Adam Boyle? How impressive he's been. Showing some emotion on that mound, and he's deserved it. Yes, third strikeout of the game, second of the inning. He's been real strong here coming out of that Fanshawe bullpen. So the Hawks earn back a run there. Sacrifice fly off the bat of Berkey. He'll scores Ty Martin from third. Ian Swartz back on the hill, starting the sixth inning. And despite this great game played by Fanshawe, you really can't be too comfortable with the three-run lead. This is an awfully strong Humberhawks offense that could come alive at any time. Got the home crowd behind them. Momentum could shift in a heartbeat. So far today, it appears as though the Fanshawe Falcons finding themselves on the outside looking in at a playoff spot. Maybe just want a little bit more today. They've been firing on all cylinders. A strong start by Stephen Barclay. Perhaps even a stronger appearance by the relief arm, Adam Boyle, have put themselves in a pretty good situation. Yeah, no kidding. Humber stranded 11 base runners in this one. Not a good luck. Fanshawe's just doing a real good job getting out of their innings. Not at all in a game where they found themselves just trailing a few runs at a time, leaving 11 potential base runners out there. Might have a few of these hitters lying awake tonight. The big 5-0 for the Fanshawe Falcons stepping in there, Catalin Morin. First year player out of Amherstburg, Ontario. Now at the two hour mark in this ball game. It hasn't exactly been an offensive output. It hasn't exactly been a pitcher's duel. It's been a curious game today. A little bit of everything. Yeah, not too often we see Humber down 6-3 going into the sixth inning of a ball game. Hawks have not played from behind too often today. That's a frozen rope into center field. Liam Sutherland tosses it back in. Lead off single for Marin. He's now two for two on the day with a triple and a strikeout.
Runner now, Halford. One for three on the day. Scored two runs, reached base on a fielder's choice and a single. Show and bunt. Throw down there. Just not in time. So just like that, the Falcons have a base runner in scoring position. Trying to add to this three-run lead. Morin, the runner on second. That one again misses outside. Swartz going to have to battle here with statistically the Falcons' best hitter. Meeting of the minds here on the mound. Yeah, Zorts has had a little bit of control issues coming into this one. Throwing seven balls and five strikes. Definitely don't like those numbers. Yeah, he's been pretty consistently been missing on the outside part at the plate. Hasn't really came inside too often of these Fanshawe hitters. Does so there and gets rewarded for it. Swung on and ripped foul. Chance for the fans to make a play. Fanshawe has trickled in runs through multiple innings of this game. Humbert just trying to stop the leak. Another foul ball in the same exact area. This time they got their heads up over there. Full count here for Swartz. None out in the inning. Runner on second base. Pop-up should be playable. Infield coming in. LaBelle oh, lets no. that one drop. Not the communication you're looking for. Not the execution you're looking for. Berkiel and LaBelle in the middle of that infield. That ball certainly drifting over the leaf side. Instead it's LaBelle who calls him off, unable to make the basket catch. Could have been the sun, could have been the wind. Either way, runners aboard. Yeah, it's been a frustrating day out here for the Hawks, and that certainly will add to the turmoil. Here, one for two on the day with an RBI and a base on balls and two runs. Having quite the afternoon. That's a hard hit ball towards the gap. This one may drop to Banning laying out, making the catch. Osnar Becky coming up with that great catch. Really showing off his stuff there in right field. I don't know what that was. Of course that's Nara Becky in right field. I think I just saw the speed of the layout. I'm so used to DeBanning <laughs> being so athletic and left. And Nara Becky's got some wheels <laughs> too, Adam. <laughs> you showing me up. I, I might start calling DeBanning Nara Becky if he keeps that play up. But an athletic play in right field, much to the joy of Ian Swartz on the mound. That one certainly looked like it was going to drop in that gap, but Nara Becky showcasing the wheels, laying out, getting the jersey dirty, making the play. And finally one down here. Runners going. The throw, not in the location it's needed. Ty Martin unable to drop down the tag. Now two in scoring position here for the Fanshawe Falcons. And Morin trying to Manufacture this run all by himself, scored, or excuse me, stole second and stole third. And a perfectly executed double steal there. Yeah. 
Once again, Swartz misses. 1-1 one, one the count. This Hawks offense, now with just six outs to work with, can't afford to give up any more damage. Check swing. Looks like it might have been in. Yeah, no appeal there. there. That one's in there, strike two. Ian Swartz able to even up the count. Funny timing there, right as the fan shot dug up was saying good eye, the umpire put up the sign for the strike. Yeah, the dugout always thinks they have the right call, but certainly not the best angle into home plate. Swung on and hit into left field. This time it's to Banning. He'll make the play. Runner tags coming into home. Throw cut off. Fanshawe adds another one to their total. So a ruling here by the home plate umpire saying that runner on third left early, left the tag before the base was made. So instead of that seventh run counting, instead that's the final out of the inning. So a big break for the Humber Hawks. Brian Harvey in absolute disbelief pleading his case with the home plate umpire. Yeah, Walker was that close to his third RBI of the afternoon, but Morin on third base after doing such a good job advancing from first to third on a couple of stolen bases just left the bag a little too early there. And Brian Harvey just got the toss. Home plate umpire has had enough and Brian Harvey is going to give him an earful. Still going. A lot of pointing, a lot of finger waving, a lot of unhappy head coaches. At least one. And Adam, arguing with the umpires, I never really thought he'd get much accomplished. I don't know what the goal is here. He's still going. Yeah, not done just yet. He's got Boyle trying to warm up, but instead his head coach is getting in an earful. So Brian Harvey trying to fire up his boys. They stand at six and seven outside of a playoff spot. Trying to spark them. They played well today against a strong Humber, Humber Hawks team. I got to commend the man behind the plate there. He really let Harvey get his case in. Gave him every opportunity. <laughs> say what you want to say. I'll let you walk back to the dugout. But I think he heard. Just, heard enough. Yeah, just one word too many. You see that so often with baseball ejections. One more word out of you. I'll tell you what, Brian Harvey had more than one word left in him. So as the head coach for the Fanshawe Falcons just paces around in foul territory, we still got a couple innings to play here. The call that started that whole brouhaha it appears as though the Fanshawe Falcons scored the seventh run on a sacrifice fly. Instead, umpire ruled that the runner took off early. We're getting a pitching change here. Noah Campagnolo checking into this one. Campagnolo has made four appearances this season. Two of those were starts. This time will come in for relief, 4.30 ERA. Liam Sutherland leads it off, hitting on the first pitch. Ground ball to third baseman, Braden Halford will be the first out of this sixth inning. The first time Sutherland's been out this game. Came into that at bat one for one with a triple and two base on balls, including an RBI and a stolen base. Now so not just, a bad afternoon for him. Yeah, no kidding. 
You can say that on most days about Liam Sutherland. Another strong performance today. Got me there. The Hawks now down to five outs. Dennis DeBanning had a big rip at that first pitch offering. Once again, Campagnolo. Starting off strong in this one. Decided to switch it up despite Adam Boyle. Pitching well in relief. That one just missing. Fanshaw. Thought Campagnolo found the strike zone. Blue says no. And another one just missing the plate. The fellow's in red, getting restless. Also of note that Boyle would now be in line for the win for the Falcons. Great point. Chance for Boyle to add to his stat sheet. Already has two wins to his name. Looking for that third. Banning staying alive here. The full count. Swing and a miss. Dennis goes down, swinging. Campagnolo. Of the day. Yeah, he's been awful hot, hot to start this relief appearance. Hunter Bisser steps up now, fourth year player. Hawks hoping the veteran is able to get on base here. They desperately need it. Three runs would be a tall task in the bottom of seven. Again, popped up to the same location. I think our baseball budget is going to go up <laughs> after this game. Plenty of balls finding the greenery. This wooded area surrounding Connor Vale Park. 2-2 two -two pitch, low and outside. Hunter Bisser. Nice work to stay alive. Trying to get something going with two. Check swing and appeal down to first. No swing is the rule Hunter Bisser earns the walk there, the first base runner of the bottom of the sixth for the Humber Hawks. Here's Ty Martin when they need him most. Came into today's contest with the second best batting average in the league, the third best in program history. That mark coming into today, 462. Video game like numbers. Video game numbers on easy difficulty. <laughs> The 
one-one pitch to Martin. Try to hold back on that swing. Once again, the appeal goes the way of Humber. Martin has worked his way to a 2-1 count. Swing and fouled straight back. 2-2, Ty's going to try to keep alive with two outs. Runner's going. That one's in the dirt. Runner looking, that's Perez Torres. Slides in head first in there safely. Vidal Perez Torres came in as a pinch runner for Hunter Bisser. Steals second on the pass ball and while he's at it makes the turn. Heads on down to third. Not too often we've called his name in this baseball season. Doesn't have an at bat on the year but showcasing the speed. That big looping curve is in there, strikeout. For Campagnolo, Ty Martin can't believe it. He'll head back to the dugout. So after Perez Torres brought a little bit of light to the bottom of the sixth inning, instead it's Campagnolo punching out Ty Martin to put an end to the threat. For the top of seven, it appears as though we'll see Ian Swartz at least started out Campagnolo having a strong inning there. Only allowed that base runner on a base on balls, but other than that, those two strikeouts showed what he's got there on the mound. Absolutely. I mean, the Hawks have had plenty of threatening innings, at least to put up runs, but just really couldn't come through on their opportunities. I know, Andrew, you mentioned earlier about those 11 base runners stranded. I'm sure that number's Climbed a bit recently, but climbed to 12. Climbed up to 12. So those missed opportunities have really plagued the Humber Hawks here. Just three runs on the board for them today. Yeah, so many times we've seen that runner, the lead runner on third base, just a few feet away from home plate, but just can't pull him in. Not to mention two different innings, leaving the bases loaded. Stranded base runners are just a part of baseball, but you don't want to make it too much of a habit. Yeah, it's been the big difference here. Fanshawe only stranding eight and Humber stranding 12. Fanshawe's up by three runs. I'm gonna say there's a massive correlation there. Exactly right. For Hooven at the plate, he's had a nice day defensively. Looks like in the Fanshawe bullpen, we got another pitcher stretching and tossing. Though I'd imagine Campagnolo is gonna get a chance to finish this one out. Especially with the way he's pitched. That one ripped down the first base line, foul. Hooven's been pretty effective in the play, or uh, at the play today, rather, with one for two and a base on balls. Off speed pitch misses for Swartz. Finds himself behind 3 1. Another ball pulled down that first baseline. For Hooven appears to be way ahead on the offerings from Swartz. Gonna need to sit back just a little bit if he wants to find fair territory. Three two pitch. Grounded to Burkeel at second. Flip over to Murphy. First out of this seventh inning. 
Hawks need two more of those so the offense can get back to work. Joss Arce, second year player out of Oshawa, Ontario. Shows Bunt, lays it down the third base line. That's a good look of one. Martin with the barehanded play. The stretch by Murphy just enough to get Arce at first. So it hasn't been really a defensive showcase by the Hawks today, but that last play there is awful pretty. Ty Martin scoops that one up with the bare right hand. A hard throw over. Aiden Murphy going prone over there on first, able to record the out. Yeah, he's so good there at that hot corner. With that strong arm, with that strong arm, is everything you want in a third baseman. That'll make Ty just feel a little bit better about a few of those miscues early on in today's game. So pitching and defense. Working together here in the top of seven. Hawks trying to retire the side. Swartz ahead, 0-2. Swing and a little dribbler. Swartz is going to get to it. Throw over, seems high, is high. Gets by Aiden Murphy. Runner is going to be awarded second base. So charge a throwing error. To the pitcher, Ian Swartz, runner moves on to second. Yeah, that was a tough play there. Didn't really have a chance to plant his feet properly. I don't think Ty Martin was all too pleased that Swartz took that ball. All of Swartz's momentum was taking him away from first base. Yeah, it's a good point. It's so tough as the pitcher. you got to get in there and kind of turn your body away quickly. After that foul tip. Catcher and pitcher will have a word. So despite that last miscue by Swartz, it's been a pretty good start to the top of this seventh inning. Hawks just trying to stop the bleeding here, so the offense has a chance. Ferris Adamu at the plate. 214 hitter on the year. Grounder to Burkiel. Throw in the dirt. And the throwing errors continue to cost these Humber Hawks. Burkiel. Fielded that one clean, but absolutely spiked that one. Into the infield dirt, Aiden Murphy couldn't make the scoop. Ferris Adamu now standing on second. After that error. Soft little pop-up over there to Aiden Murphy. We'll put an end to this inning. Fanshawe puts another one on the board thanks to a throwing error from Leif Burkiel. Humberhawk's going to be in tough in the bottom of seven here, down four. Yeah, and you got to feel a little bad for Swartz after that one. Had a real good game in the, uh, coming out of the bullpen in relief. Got a little bit of a break after that runner, uh, Morin. Took a little bit of a lead too early off that bag early but a lot of run there, can't feel too good. Yeah, two throwing errors in that one for the Humber Hawks in that last half inning. Adds to the run total, not too often. We see teams come in here to Conor Park and put up a touchdown, but that's exactly 
what the Falcons have done today. And it is Campagnolo on the mound for the Falcons. It appears as though he'll have the opportunity to close this one out. Trying to conclude this win for the first relief pitcher of the game, Adam Boyle. Stephen Barclay got the start, pitched awfully well for these Falcons. All of the pitching decisions for the Fanshawe Falcons in this crucial seventh inning will be at the hands of the assistant coaches. Head coach Brian Harvey got the toss earlier in this one, arguing a call. Hawks are going to need some rally here, down four with only three with three outs left. Aiden Murphy leading things off. He recorded the final out in the top half of this inning. Now a chance to get things started in the bottom. Swing and a miss for strike one. Murphy with an on-base percentage of an even 500. Desperately need that 50-50 to go their way here. Campagnolo ahead of Murphy here, one, two. Curveball in there, just missing once again. Fanshawe thought they had it. It's been a tight strike zone all day long for either side. Yeah, can't fault the ump there. He's been pretty consistent with the strike zone. Oh! Not the one Aiden Murphy wanted to have a go at. That one appeared to be low, that breaking ball. Called strike three by the home plate umpire, Campagnolo. Able to punch out Aiden Murphy for the first out of the bottom of the seventh inning. Yeah, either way, that was just a dirty curveball there. Nada Murphy, the second strikeout, both looking this afternoon. Yeah, that's a little bit of a knee buckler. Nice pitch by Campagnolo. Two chances left for the Hawks. Fanshawe had a lot to play for coming into today. They've lived up to their high expectations. Tyrus Bath. Unable to hold off on that pitch, he took over catching responsibilities for Jeff Siams. This, just the fourth at bat of the season for Bath. Take strike two, count now even. Hawks down to their final two outs here. Facing a four-run deficit at the hands of the Fanshawe Falcons. Bath thought about that one, able to hold off. Count moves full. Three-two pitch. Swung on and struck well. That one into left field, tracking and turning as the left fielder. That one's going to drop behind him. A well-struck ball by Tyrus Bath. Yeah, left fielder that lost that one. Looked like he was going to catch it, but he was running backwards as he just underestimated how far that ball was going to travel. Yeah, that's Judd Walker out there. We've seen him make a few nice plays today. He seemed to camp out under that one at the last second. Just appeared to carry over his head. So perhaps chalk that up to the breeze coming in here. That one seemed to hang up there, but Tyrus Bath will take it. Just his second at bat, or apologies, second hit. 
of this season. The Hawks clinging to life here. Aaron Nash, the pinch hitter, still looking for his first hit of the season, I should say. Yeah, limited opportunities for Aaron this year, just this being his sixth at bat. That one outside, 2-1 now the count. So some rotational players making things happen. That long double by Tyrus Bath, now Aaron Nash. Swinging and missing at that one, 2-2. Two -two. Campagnolo really with just that one hard hit ball off him today. That's the one we just seen from Bath. There's that big curveball again, Aaron Nash. Started to duck out of the way of that one at the last second. Movement brought it just inside. Seems to be the pitch camp and Yolo wants to go to in key situations. Nash staying alive, nice work. After Nash, Hawk's gonna turn over the order. Yeah, if he can get on here, that would be absolutely massive. Big chance here for a rally. Count full. Struck through the gap. Left side of the infield. That'll move the runner up to his third. Runners on the corner, and you said it, Andrew. What a big at-bat there for Aaron Nash. And how about the two fresh faces, Tyrus Bath. Aaron Nash, putting the Hawks in a pretty good situation here. It's worth noting, Fanshaw began their season with a walk-off over the Humber Hawks, 7-6 in extra innings. I'm sure that's not one that the Hawks have forgotten. But on a frustrating day. Hawks trying to have some magic of their own here. With just one out, they have time to work. Narbeki finally got on base in his first at bat with a base on balls. Got stolen base as well. Leads the team with 10 RBI. That's a hard struck ball into right field. Making the play though in right, Ferris Adamu. Coming in to score, Tyrus Bass. So that's the fourth run on the board for the Humber Hawks. They find themselves now down three with two outs against them. Now Rebecca absolutely drilled that one into right field, but good positioning by Adamu out there. Good enough to record the out. Do or die time now for Humber. Sam LaBelle. Just one runner on, just trying to keep this game going. Time for the big boys to step up. That one could be in the top. Gap of Damu chasing, and oh, what a play to end it. Loses the cap, gets the ball instead. And the Fanshawe Falcons record a big win here at Connervale Park, 7-4 over the Humber Hawks. Yeah, tough afternoon here for Humber. Stephen Huff really started when he had a tough time getting out, really get out, getting out of the gate in this ball game, and Humber Hawks really couldn't even get on the board early, early on, and that hurt them. And they were really playing from behind all afternoon. Yeah, definitely a more of a chasing game for Humber today. Just really couldn't find the lead here. Consistently chased around Fanshawe. Give a lot of credit to Barclay Campagnolo. 
and Boyle, the pitchers for Fanshawe on this one. They did an admirable job against a potent Humber Hawks offense. But that'll do it. The Fanshawe Falcons move their way to 7-7, seven and seven, bringing their record to 500. Humber Hawks fall to 11-3. And, and that'll do it for here from the Hawk Sports Network. My broadcasting partner, Andrew Milani. Thanks for tuning in.